Well, it's been a while since I did a last uh, video here on YouTube, and I decided in light of the fact that my kids are just now starting school, uh, which is in August of 2018, there was an item that I needed to buy for them. Uh, one is in junior high, the other in high school, which um, I thought might be of interest to some of you. And that is contained in this little package here. So we're going to take a look at that right now. And we have, voila! Now, some of you may say, oh, it's just a boring calculator, but does it really look that boring? Well, let's look at it a little bit more closely. So here we have the HP Hewlett Packard Prime graphing calculator. And you might say, well, why did I buy this uh, for my kids? Why do they even need it for school? Well, uh, kids need calculators for school. And you might say, well, yeah, you, I've got a calculator on my iPhone. Most kids have iPhones. Uh, or at least an iPod Touch or some kind of smart device with an app that'll do it. So why do we need a dedicated calculator? And the answer is written here on the side. SAT, AP, IB. These are all exams. Uh, the SAT being in the United States uh, to uh, graduate. Uh, you, you take your SAT exam and that doesn't determine uh, whether you're going to pass or fail necessarily, but what it set, sets is the bar for you to enter into college. And many colleges use SAT scores to determine uh, whether they're going to accept you or not. If they don't accept your SAT scores, you might have to make, uh, you might have to take an, another exam. Anyway, this calculator is approved uh, on these three exams here. Uh, and it's a graphing calculator. And it's one of the only calculators, as you can see in the little picture here, uh, that has a touch screen. So you, yes, you can pinch to zoom uh, on the graphs as well. And you might say, well, my goodness, it looks a little bit big. Is it kind of big? And yes, uh, if you take a look here, <laughs> here's my iPhone 7, right? So uh, my iPhone 7 is, in comparison uh, to this calculator, uh, quite a bit smaller. But um, even though you might wish to argue that an iPhone through an app has in some ways uh, a more feature-rich experience, especially if you use something like Wolfram Alpha, that website. You can type in pretty much any kind of math and it'll do it for you. Those things are not allowed on exams, right? Not, not allowed in it on exams in high school math classes and they're certainly not allowed on the SAT. But what are allowed are calculators like this. So what we're going to need for this unboxing is an X-Acto knife which is, for those of you who don't know, it's just a razor blade. And I must say that these things are really tricky to get open. You might think you're going to have an easier time uh, <laughs> using scissors, but believe me, uh, unless you have some pretty massive scissors, you're going to need something like this uh, to get it off. So my advice is to um, follow the groove. There's a groove along the edge. Not on the very edge, but about, say, five millimeters in. And you need to go over it more than once. And then the groove on the top. And then, of course, on the other side. And finally, <laughs> there it is. Um, I must say that it takes a bit of effort, but uh, you might do it another way and completely destroy your packaging. But if you want to keep the packaging fairly intact, then that's the way I advise to do it. So, of course, on the back, it just tells you the approved exams, and it lists up more exams than were listed on the front. It says uh, PSAT, NMSQT, uh, we've got the uh, SAT, the AP, SAT subject tests, IB diploma program. So, uh, most tests, uh, ACT is not listed here. Uh, their requirements are a bit more strict. So. Uh, that doesn't mean you can use this calculator on every part of the test. There's some calculator only uh, and no calculator portions of the test, but um, 
it's approved for most of the major tests uh, in the United States when you're graduating from high school and passing into college. And so what we have uh, inside the box, you can see the cables here. We have uh, this particular cable is the USB. It has a little rubber grommet here, I guess, to make it more secure, uh, which you can take off if you want. And then that's uh, just a standard, um, I believe it's micro, not mini, mini uh, USB connector there. Uh, you also have um, another connector here, another cable, and then your power, your power connector can be used in the United States or in Japan, since I'm here uh, in Japan, we will use this, which is standard, uh, just like it is in the United States. So, other than the cables, you've got your standard, uh, how to hook up your power and charge it type of materials. You've got your limited warranty and customer care in multiple languages card. You've got your HP uh, CD for the prime graphing calculator in multiple languages, but most likely you'll get them the most uh, new, the newest firmware and other updates if you get them online rather than this, besides how many of you have a CD uh, reader in your computer these days anyway, right? And uh, you've got the Prime gra Graphing Calculator Manual, which for those of you who know anything about HP vintage calculators from the 1980s and 1990s, uh, this manual is fairly, is fairly thin, but uh, you can find more details, uh, a more detailed manual online. And unfortunately that online manual isn't uh, available in print, but um, well, that's the age in which we live. Uh, and then, of course, you've got this information which tells you that uh, you can have an app. Now, this won't be allowed to be used on tests, even though it's the Prime. Uh, you won't be able to take your iPad or your iPhone and say, hey, I've got the app, let me use it on the test. Uh, no, they don't let you do that. But if you don't have the calculator with you, but you have your smartphone or, or uh, tablet, or computer even, they have Mac and Windows versions. Thankfully, the Mac isn't left out. Sadly, the Mac version seems to crash a lot in my experience, but hopefully by the time you see this video, HP will have addressed that. Um, but yeah, that's in multiple languages as well. And um, it's really basically the same thing as the actual calculator, but you can use it on your computer. So once we, <laughs> we've, we've opened everything except for the actual calculator itself. So to get to the calculator itself, you take out the back piece, and then the challenge begins to get it out of this. So you really have to pry it out, or you could just, if you don't mind destroying the packaging, you can push really hard and pop it out. You'll put a little dent in your packaging, but there it is. You got it popped out. And so this is what the calculator itself looks like. Uh, this is just a screen protector. Okay, and then you can slide uh, the calculator out of its case because it has a uh, sliding. And the first time you get it out is is tough. It's it takes some effort, but I suggest using your thumb and the back fingers and pulling it out this way. And this is just your plastic case. There has nice rubber feet on the bottom, and so does the Prime itself. They both have rubber feet, so you can use it with a case attached on back and you've got rubber feet or just use the bare prime and it also has the rubber feet and so of course when you want to protect your calculator you're going to slide it in here and it will be protected on both sides this is the battery um, a Samsung a smartphone battery I can provide more details about that if you ever need to replace it in a few years but um, uh, it's a standard smartphone battery that's being used. There's a reset. You can use a paper clip to reset it if your calculator ever freezes up. And that's very typical for uh, HP calculators. Now I bought some other accessories and I'll show those to you now. So I bought these um, these items to go with it. Uh, this is a soft case. And you might say, why do you need a soft case? Don't you have a slide cover? Well, yes you do, but uh, some children, especially my own, are not very 
well, particularly careful around somewhat expensive things like this. By the way, uh, the cheapest price I found to buy it in the United States is at Walmart. It's about $118. That's, that was the price at the time in July of 2018 when this was purchased. And I checked around a lot. So, you know, you, you still need to do your own checking around, but Walmart, as of summer of 2018, had the lowest price for the Prime, $118. You might say, wow, $118. Uh, well, that's about the going price for even a TI calculator. And some of you may be TI calculator familiar. Uh, why buy something that's not TI? Well, TI has a monopoly in the United States. Uh, HP doesn't, but HP used, used to have a fairly strong um, following among students, and that's how I came to uh, actually know the HP brand in 1989 when I entered engineering school. I bought the HP 28S, and I'll show you some of those vintage calculators in a few minutes. But these are the accessories that I purchased from Amazon.com. This is the CO2 CREA CREA. Uh, soft case neoprene case and it has a really furry soft lining on the inside so if you don't want to use the slide case um, or even if you want to use the slide case it will fit but um, with or without it fits the calculator like a glove and you've got a little pocket here if you want to put one of the cables in it you can do that so even with the slide cover on it will fit perfectly and it's really um, a perfect match for the HP Prime. Now what I also bought is this uh, Gorilla screen protector. It's not glass, it's film, but um, it's quite good. Now I, I have two kids and I already bought another Prime and I've already set that up for my other child so that's why I got, it was very nice to have a two-pack and you can see all the features. It's whatever military grade means, I don't know. Anti-glare, fingerprint resistant, which is nice, and scratch resistant too. So, uh, if you're wondering, the Prime actually has a glass screen. It's not plastic. Uh, most all of the other HP calculators in the past were plastic. And I was told by a representative of HP that this is, it's not Gorilla Glass, but it is a, a fairly strong glass. Um, it doesn't have a lot of coatings on it, and I don't know all the technical details about it, but just in case, you know, the iPhone has glass and people still buy screen protectors too, so I thought, why not? So this Gorilla screen protector, again, is available on Amazon. And it includes, well, it tells you what it includes, screen protectors, microfiber, cleaning cloth, an installation card. So the installation card is a little rubbery gizmo here that lets you smooth it on. And then of course your mi microfiber cloth, you want to clean it uh, before you put on before you put on any screen protector, you want to make sure it's clean. And then uh, this is just the information. It's got it for the, these things for other calculators too. And so what we can do now is actually put it on and we'll show you how easy or difficult it is to do that. Thankfully, uh, there are little tabs on either side that tell you um, about the, the screen protector. And it says, this is step two. And it says, this is step one. Please peel off this mask before application. Also note that there's sharp corners up here and rounded corners up here. Here are the rounded corners at the top. So you will need to put it on like this. Okay. And that's how it will fit. So it actually goes up to the very edge up here and covers that HP logo and the HP Prime graphing calculator portion. And so uh, to put this on, what we want to do is we're going to take this off. Now, I also have another tool that is rather useful. It's a little dust blower here that sometimes even eliminates the need 
of the microfiber cloth, assuming you don't get your fingerprints on it. But again, we're going to be putting it on like this with the rounded corners uh, at the top. So on the step one, it says peel this off. So we're going to peel that step one off, and that's going to be the, the side that goes down, the side that affixes to uh, your screen. And then after we put it on there, then we're going to get all the bubbles out with this little hard rubber guy here. And then at the very last, we'll take off the outside protective film. So let's do all of the steps here. We've taken that off. Doesn't look to me like there's any fingerprints there. So I think now that I've blown it off, we can just go ahead and do our step one side and put that on. Try not to get my fingerprints on it if I can avoid. And and then it's just a matter of lining it up. Okay. We got some bubbles here to get rid of. Okay, it looks like I did a fairly decent job. Um, maybe it's not 100% vertically centered. I matched it up with the very top edge here. So it's got a couple millimeters of gap down at the bottom. But I don't see that that's a big problem. And looking at it, there's a little bit of a gap over here and there's virtually no gap over here. But I don't really see that as a big problem. Try to get the air bubbles out. Okay, and so now we are going to take off the final uh, cover. And there we are. And honestly, you can't really see, um, you can't really see that it was on there. There's a little bubble here. I got rid of it. And it looks pretty impressive. I'll zoom in a little bit more. So it probably won't turn on, but I'll just push the power button anyway. Yeah, it says you need to charge it up uh, before you can actually turn it on. So here we have my um, calculator collection, all HP, going from oldest to the newest, this being the prime. Uh, this was what got me started with HP calculators when I entered into engineering school. 1989, this was in the bookstore catalog. It's uh, the 28S, and it's missing some rubber feet on the back, but it is pretty old, right? It's 2018 right now. So uh, this is fairly old, and yes, for those of you who know the 28S and its battery door, this is the original battery door. So most of you who know the bat about the battery door, it usually breaks off, but believe me, I am the most meticulous person you will ever come across. So. I've kept it in fairly good shape. Uh, you can see that here. It's really neat. This, this calculator is neat because of the keyboard. And you don't have to do multiple shifts to get the A, B, C's, and so on. It has quite a bit of memory. You can store text, both upper and lower case. I won't go, I'm not gonna use this video to go into all the details of it, but um, it is a little bit troublesome now in modern day times when it doesn't have an SD card and it, it only has an infrared 
LED back here for communication. So uh, for getting programs into it, you're going to manually enter them. And that's what I did. But still, still works. Some of the keys up here, I have to push really hard for them to register now. Uh, and there's no easy fix for it, unfortunately. But um, it's still somewhat usable, and I just, I just love it. So that's the that's the 28s. Turn it off. You go up here and do the red button, and then on, and it's off. So this this comes with its own case, uh, and you know I didn't actually we didn't have these neoprene cases back in the late 80s, so I never bought one. But you can still see it's in good condition. It's not the shiny smooth plastic. It's a little bit textured, and it's not really scratched up. So 28s. Uh, this is the original case that this calculator came in. It says Hewlett Packard on it. It's a zipper case. This is the 48 uh, GX calculator. And by the way, I have some photos, some high resolution photos on my Flickr account, which I'll link for you down in the description below, which will really let you zoom in and see more detail than even this 4K video will. Um, and yes, this video is in 4K. I've uploaded it to YouTube in 4K. If you're a Safari Mac user, blame Apple, seriously. Um, we're limited to 1080p because Apple won't get their act together and, and allow certain codecs to be played back. And so we have to go to Chrome to see videos in 4K. But yes, the video you're watching now actually is in 4K. To see it in 4K, you'll have to switch over to Chrome. But if you don't want to do that, just go to my Flickr account and you can see some high resolution photos. Um, turning on this calculator, you can see the, the screen is blue. Okay, it's not your standard black, but it's actually very, very visible. Uh, it does not have a backlight, but um, it's reflective and uh, it works fairly well. Yes, you've got all the A, B, C's, and D's, but you have to use an alpha key to access them. So in some respects, it's, it's a little bit more difficult to use than this, but this is more powerful. Um, this calculator has some pretty impressive features, which you can enable by opening the uh, door on the back and there's a card slot and I have a 128k yep that's right the 128k just like the original Macintosh in 1984 had 128k of RAM this is a 128k card and the reason I bought only 128k you can get larger ones but I bought this one because I wanted to put something called meta kernel meta kernel on it and that requires this particular size of a card not physical size but the memory size of 128k the great thing about this card is it's fram f r a m fram which means it does not need a separate cr2032 or, or cr1616 battery on it it's it's like flash it's not flash technology it's fram but it's basically the same if you want to think of it that way it doesn't lose any memory once it's pulled out or when the power is shut down so um, uh, I can post a link about that as well. But you've got two card slots. And card slot one, the one I'm using now, is 128K only. And uh, that will allow you to you know, put other cards. There are other cards that are even still sold. You have to go to eBay, but you can find them that will expand this. Um, a card with electrical engineering programs on it and so on. So that's the 48GX. This over here is the 50G. And this, by the way, is the original HP case. The pre previous model to this one had a leather case. And you might say, well, isn't leather better? Well, it scratches up. This one won't scratch. So I kind of like this one. It's magnetic. It's got a magnetic latch to it. And uh, the 50G is really the ultimate, in some ways even more than the Prime, because it's the last true RPN calculator. All of these are RPN. Um, and for those of you who don't already know, what is RPN? Well, most of you might think, what's 5 times 5? It's 25. Well, how do you type it in? 5 times 5, right? Well, on an RPN calculator, you don't do that. You type in 5, and then you enter it. And then you type 5, and then what you want to do with it? Times. And then it says your answer is 25. And it lists them all on the stack, which is just your memory there. And then you can um, uh, delete one at a time, if you like. So there's a lot more I could say about RPN, but basically this is a true RPN calculator. You can switch it to algebraic mode, which is 5 times 5 equals and that type of thing. But it, you really get the most out of these calculators by using them in RPN mode. Okay, so I'll turn it off. And then, of course, we have the prime, which is really an algebraic calculator at heart. Um, 
not truly RPN, although you can switch it to RPN mode. And again, you can see I've got the slide case on. I didn't close it completely because it's a little bit hard to get out when it's brand new. But you just slide it, slide it right off of there, and there is the prime. So in terms of thinness, uh, yeah, the, the prime is the thinnest of them all. If we take uh, the 50G in comparison, we can see the 50G is much thicker. And then if we take it in comparison with the 48GX, right, significantly thicker. Um, the 28S, it, it's, it's thicker, but remember, you've got two panels there, right? So um, compared to, again, my iPhone 7, this is not the 7 Plus, but compared to my iPhone 7, you can see the size differences between it. Okay, and again, uh, for students, this uh, you're not allowed to use an iPhone on your test, like SAT, or even in class sometimes. It really depends on the teacher. But you are able to use um, these HP calculators. Even the 50G, if you go to uh, the College Board uh, page, which I'll uh, link for you, that will tell you what calculators are approved. And this cal calculator is an older model. It's, sadly, it's no longer sold. But it's, it's also approved, the 50G. And there are some other, um, that, like the 28S. It's very old, but you can still use it if you want to uh, on the SAT, on the calculator approved sections. But you cannot use an iPhone uh, on those tests. So that's why you might say, well, isn't this kind of a little bit out of date and so on? Yes and no. No in that HP still came out with some pretty advanced technology in the Prime. And I'm not going to go over every detail about the Prime, but I'll give you an overview uh, of some features. Okay, we've got my daughter's uh, Prime here because hers is already charged up. Um, basically, it looks just like the one I just opened. It also has a screen protector applied, which really you can see it looks very nice. You can't even see that the screen protector uh, is applied on there. So to turn it on, we just push the on button down here, and then it shows the HP logo for like a, just over a second, and that's its total boot time. So yes, it actually is booting, and it boots up that quickly. Um, what you're seeing here, th this has, I'm not going to go over every feature, but just the basic functionality. You can see it's got a, a color screen. Uh, normally, uh, it comes shipped in algebraic mode, which means five times five equals. So what, should, what many of you who are watching this are accustomed to. You can switch it to RPN mode, but um, it comes in algebraic. And after a few seconds, you can see it dims the screen. So normally, you're going to be in this home button. Uh, the home button, what we'll do, we, are, we have some junk on the screen. Let's go ahead and clear it off. We see there's the blue shift key, and then underneath the escape key, it says clear in blue. So we'll push blue shift and then escape to clear off the screen so we can start fresh and new. So what we're going to do now is just type in 5 like we did before, times, and then 5 equals, and there's your answer, 25. And the difference between home and CAS, um, the computer algebraic system, uh, these, these are separated. And actually there are good reasons for it. Uh, you can see 5 times 5 equals 25 divided by, which it knows, you want to take the 25, that's the answer you got before, A and S means answer. And then say you want to divide it by 2.562, enter, and it gives you the decimal answer. And if, you might say, well, of course it does. Well, CAS will do something a little bit different. Okay, here's CAS. And so we've got some other things uh, on the screen here. But let's do 5 times 5 equals... 25 and so there's the uh, answer to that now we can come back over here to home and look all of our information we did before is still here switch to CAS and all the calculators in its memory are here so you can see they're separated but yes don't worry you can copy and paste between the two but we'll go back over here and we can see that we divided the answer by 2562 okay let's do the same thing divide by 2 Five six two equals, and it also gave a decimal. But 
what happens if we do 5 divided by 1? 5. 5 divided by 2? 5 over 2. What happens if we go back to home and do 5 divided by 2? It gives a decimal. So you can see, just boiling, boiling it down to the basics, home, whatever you do in home, is giving you the decimal answers. For example, pi. <laughs> pi is a blue shift function. Blue shift 3 gives you pi. So if you enter that, it gives you 3.14 to a certain number of decimal places. Now if we do the same thing in CAS, blue shift 3 and enter, you get the pi symbol. So then you could say divided by 2, enter, and it says pi over 2. What happens if you want the decimal but you still want to work in CAS? No problem, this key right here, right next to the delete key, will say give me the decimal approximation. And there it is. And we can go back over here to home, and there's pi, and we can say divide that by 2, and there's the answer. 1.5707, and then we switch to CAS, and it's the same. So you can kind of think it's overly simplistic to say it, but if you want to keep your numbers in fraction form, use CAS. If you want to use the, see them in decimal form, come over here to home. Uh, if you want to solve equations, do it in CAS. Okay, that's uh, home is not the place to do that. Now you've got apps by pushing the apps button. You've got all number of apps, and it's a touch screen, so you can just touch like this. Here's one that I added. There's n normally nothing below this bottom row, but I added this because I thought it was neat. It is a uh, periodic table of the elements. So you can actually touch it. See, it won't all fit on screen, so you can, you can move around, right, and see it. And then you can select whatever element you want. Uh, by touching, and then you've got what's called, what are called these uh, soft keys. You just hit touch on them uh, to get more information. And then it will tell you this is silver. AG is silver, and it tells you it's solid at 25 degrees Celsius. It gives you the molecular mass, density, and so on. Uh, it's kind of a neat little um, a program there that you can use. And to get out of it, I push on uh, on, and then I can go back to apps again. So we'll go back up here. This is an advanced graphing calculator. So I'm not going to show you all of the graphing functions, but basically you can function, you can uh, graph different functions, and uh, you can check some of them. You can say, okay, I want to uh, only work with this one, and then I want to plot that. And notice how fast it, it plotted. And notice how I'm zooming in on it, too. See that? So you just do, you can do pinch and zoom, and then if you want some precision on it, you can see and get the peak approximately. What is the peak? One hundred e to the minus three, right? And uh, and so on. So you can go back here and change out to a different function, and then plot that. See? And see how fast it plotted it? Compared to other calculators, this is lightning fast. And some of you may have may know that the uh, TI Inspire and think that's just the bee's knees. It's, it's, the, it's the best calculator you can buy. And actually it's not. This Prime is faster than that. And some people, you might read some online reviews saying that the Inspire Cast is better than the Primes. But uh, don't believe those articles because, in fact, many times they're written by people who know TI calculators but who don't know HP calculators, and uh, really the two CASs are on par in, as far as solving equations as, as it goes. So don't worry too much about that. This actually is an easier to use interface. If you look at the Inspire, it's got buttons everywhere, and you really have a steep learning curve, and this is uh, quite a bit easier to learn. For some of you who love RPN calculators, you might say, oh no, I'm not going to like the Prime, and maybe you won't, even in RPN mode, but for students, who actually need a calculator, right? you can't use your iPhone, right? This is really uh, an incredible machine, and especially for the speed. And it's the only calculator with touch, and the only one that you can pinch to zoom because it's the only one with touch, not even the Inspire. We'll give you that. Now you might say, what about 3D? Well, it even has those features. It even has those. So let's, let's just uh, choose one function here. We'll do this one function, and then we'll plot it. 
and boom, it's done. But watch this. You can spin it around. Now that's impressive. Now some of you who are used to smartphones are, may not be so impressed with it, but those of you who really know calculators and have been using them for a long, long time, this is just incredible. No other calculator uh, has this feature. We'll go back to 3D graph and we'll try another function and plot it. And wow, that's not very impressive, you might say. <laughs> but there's other graphs I've got on here. Uh, this one. And that's a little bit more wavy. Now, it looks, it looks pretty boring, but what happens if I go back and I say, I want to plot two at once? You can do that. It plotted them both. I don't know about you, but that's pretty nifty. And I'm just spinning it around with my feature. So, of course, it's redrawing in real time. It's not laggy. And yes, you can use your... Um, there, there are other menu features here that you can trace it. You can zoom. And then you can choose to zoom in if you want. And it will redraw based on your zoom level. And then when you want to move around, you can just move it with your finger. So I'm not going to go through all the apps, but yeah, there's even a spreadsheet. So you know how you use math in Excel or, or um, any spreadsheet that you may normally use? Well, you can use that here. You've got an app for that. There's different solve um, solvers that can uh, solve equations. And um, okay, let's go back to the home button here. And um, we can see here that we've got some other functions around help is contextual, so wherever you're in, you get help on that. It, again, it's a touch screen. You can go to the tree and see help on different topics. Uh, you can say uh, about Prime, and it'll tell you I'm running all of the latest as of August uh, 2018. When you get your Prime, you should probably update the firmware. Most likely it won't have the uh, July 2018 update on it, and it's fairly simple to to do the updates on that. Uh, there's a, If we go in here to CAS, and then I do my toolbox and go to CAS. These are all touch menus here. You can see that. So CAS has a solver, right? And we can solve. And it says solve what? We can say solve x squared plus 2x minus 1. Now, because we only have x, it's implied what we want to solve for. So we don't even have to do comma x. We can just enter that. And it says it's a warning because we didn't say what we wanted, you know, and I didn't make it equal to 0. But it pretty much knows what we want, so we'll do enter. And there's the two answers. Minus the square root of 2 minus 1. And square root of 2 minus 1. So you have the two answers there. Right? And so it solved it. It says triangle solver up there, but actually um, what we're doing is, is not related to that. That's the last app that I was, I was in there. So if we type in function and then I go to cast, see it says function up there. So don't worry about that. But the solver can solve, just like you see here. That is one example of CAS, the computer uh, algebraic system. And in the home button, you're not going to be able to uh, solve that here. Now, if you want to change the number format, you want to do blue symbol here. And it will let, allow you to uh, change to, it's right on system now. And I don't really like system. We'll do standard. And then go back. Now the numbers look more normal, right? So if ever your numbers look strange, you just go to shift and symbol. And you can change it. I actually prefer engineering. And there they are. And basically, it throws the e after a certain number of def decimal places, e to the 0. But um, we'll just, for the sake of this example, keep it on standard. There we go. OK, what I'm showing you here is how the screen looks 
when it's in bright sunlight. So you can see it's still in the shade. I'm inside, but it's very strong uh, light that's coming in through the window here. And that light is not yet reflecting on the screen, but you can see it's reflecting down here. So this is on the brightest setting. And if I move it into the sun, okay, you can see now it's in the sun. You can still see uh, the display. It depends on the angle, right? If I move it around, you can see how it looks there. Now if I move it back into the shade, you see it there. Move it into the sun. So even though it's uh, a bit reflective, right, depending on the angle that you're holding it, uh, it's still fairly visible, so you technically could use it outside. So compared to my 50G, and now the screen is in the shade, now it's in the sun, all right, so it's not backlit. It's completely, you know, it's your normal LCD lit by the reflection of the light there. So it all depends, and in some ways, the Prime may be more visible than the 50G, but uh, it all depends on the, the angle of the reflection that you're seeing. I also have a screen protector on the 50G that might help a bit. This is just a plastic screen with no screen protector on it. And both calculators side by side. And direct sunlight. So what we're going to do now is plug in our Prime to our computer here. This is a 15-inch MacBook Pro 2015 edition, the last great MacBook Pro with MagSafe and the LED on it. If you've got a newer MacBook Pro, you don't have these great features. Thought I'd just say that. <laughs> uh, anyway, the plug will go right over here. There we go. And we plug the other end into our computer. And when you do that, it automatically powers on. I did not, I did not power on the uh, calculator myself. It automatically came on. And then in the upper right corner, if you tap it, uh, you can see, well, the battery's already at 100%. But um, if it is charging or needs to charge, you will see that information in the top right corner there. So now let's uh, take a look at the connectivity kit on my external display, which you can see I've got connected uh, through my Thunderbolt 2 mini display port connector here. Okay, so here we are in the HP connectivity kit. You can see this is the latest version as of the time of this uh, video, which is uh, July of 2018 version. I've got my Prime connected. Um, the evidence of that is if the Prime is not connected, then it will not show up here uh, in this menu. It says local, you've got one, you've got one on USB, and it says the actual name of the calculator. And you can, you can rename it if you want to. I'm doing a right click, and it will allow you to rename it. Um, also, it says update firmware. If there's a newer version of firmware, you can do the update. Clicking the triangle will show you all of the apps in the app library. You can see that here. And you can see the elements. That's the one I added. So you can go online and download third-party third apps. And it's really easy. It's just a matter of dragging and dropping. You just drag them in and add them. Now, uh, I've also got some programs. Those are listed separately. Apps. The application library is differentiated from programs. Programs would be like basic programs that you would write. You can download some for free as well. Um, for example, the EE library that I'm testing out now, I'm going to delete that just to show you how to add in one of them. Um, taking it from down here at the bottom left corner here, this is the content section. So, you know, you can drag it from your, from your desktop directly in. Uh, or you can just drag them from your desktop into the content section and they'll be saved here. So that way if you um, don't want to, you forget where you, where you had the file on your computer, well it'll all be here. So this is uh, the program that I'm going to add. And notice that I have three programs in there right now, but I'm going to add this one just by dragging it up here. See the box around programs? I'm going to let go. And it added that. Now, how do I know? I can actually see a virtual uh, screen on the calculator if I click this monitor here and I 
double click this, it's going to show me the actual contents of my prime screen. And I can even make it to fill, <laughs> fill up the whole screen. And you can see it's plugged in by USB, so it's got that charging indicator. It's telling you the exact time of day and the date that I'm making this video. And um, I'm actually going to touch my, my Prime right now and push the home button. And it cleared off that. And I'm going to type in 5 times 5, enter, and 25. So I'm touching the physical calculator right now. And because it's connected by USB, you're able to see exactly what's on the screen here. So if I do shift and, and number one for to enter into programs, it shows me that the EE library that I just added uh, is right here. And it tells me the size of it. So uh, that is one very convenient way of being, being able to view what's on your calculator screen at the same time. This software also allows other things like test mode, polls uh, for teachers, so you can see it's exam mode, uh, saving and so on, the content section, you can hide it if you like. So it's pretty nifty. This is the Mac version, you're, you're seeing my um, Macintosh here, but it also has the Windows version as well. So um, uh, this is the way that you get information to and from the calculator. In earlier calculators, like I showed you before, like the 50G, you would do it with an SD card because it has an SD card slot. On the Prime, they, it does not have an SD card, but it has a USB connector, and you can uh, do the transfer this way. So what we'll show you here now, I've got my son's Prime connected, and even though the battery isn't fully charged, it's powered through the computer. So I was able to rename it and add my son's name here to it. And what I just now did is I finished downloading. What you do if you go to check for update, uh, it says no updates available because I just downloaded them. Uh, and then you can say update calculator either through the menu of the help menu or do the right click on it and say update firmware. So we'll just do that here. And then it's going to give you this message, and it'll say, okay, 2018 July 6th, which is at the time of this video, uh, is the newest uh, firmware for the calculator. Uh, data on your calculator may be lost, so you should back up. Since this is a brand new calculator, that doesn't apply to me, and so I don't have anything to worry about. Uh, and then, of course, it gives you all of the, the uh, information uh, here and then at the bottom it says here's the HP Prime. It's got the 2016 August, so it's a couple years old. I guess it's been in stock for a while. Uh, it has older firmware on it, so we just click the update, and um, it does its little thing here. And on the actual calculator screen itself, it probably won't show the screen because it's updating the firmware, um, but it. It says on the screen itself, updating HP Prime, do not disconnect during update process. Uh, and we can see the progress bar here as it's going along. So I guess the only time you're not able to view the screen through this HP Connectivity Kit interface is when you're updating the firmware, and that makes sense. But again, on the actual calculator itself, it does show you a dialog box that says it's updating, and it warns you not to. Um, not to disconnect. So it's pretty much done here and that was fast and on the actual calculator itself it's rebooting now and it shows the HP logo and it has a little progress bar on the actual calculator. It probably is not going to show up because you can see it vanished from this particular interface but it's about 90 percent of the way through. I'm looking at the calculator now and now it is rebooting and it's going through its uh, initial setup. So let's see if I can show the screen here. Yeah, there we go. So now we want. I, I'm going to press the help button on the actual Prime itself and then I'm going to tap on tree and then I'm going to go to about HP Prime and I'm going to select that and then it's going to show the operating system version 50.64 here, software version 2.00138, oh, oh, 
and of course it has the the date which is what we just updated to which is July 6th and at the time of this writing that is what uh, is the newest and so um, we can see here that there are no programs it was brand new but if there were, was anything in there it would have been wiped and that's how easy it is to do the update again you're looking at the Mac interface but the Windows uh, software is pretty much the same so you would go through the same thing you want to check for an update then you download the updates and after that you can either update through this menu option here or you can do the right click and do the update from there so here is uh, the last thing I'll show you on the computer screen is the HP Prime app for the Mac which is the same for Windows the same for your iOS or other mobile devices and uh, at least on the Mac this is free you can download it and it works you just click on screen like this and you can uh, choose which functions uh, that you want you click plot and there it is it plots it for you um, you can go to home and then do your five times five equals and get 25 you can go over to CAS and do your solving for your formulas and all of that um, this says beta version because I'm testing some stability issues with HP right now for the Mac version and I would encourage all of you Mac users to do the same thing providing HP some feedback on that because I really want to get this better optimized for the Mac uh, the last thing I'll say about it is, is that you can choose different skins um, so this is compact horizontal small honestly I don't know why they have compact and small they look almost exactly the same don't they uh, medium is my favorite although I hate the window I wish they could just pop out the calculator so I wouldn't see the edges here but oh well and then you've got large um, so you can see the screen but it's not retinified right so if you've got a retina or high DPI screen you're, you're just gonna blow it up uh, bigger and all the pixels are gonna be blown up too um, I was told by HP that you can take your own photo and and bring in your um, photo to make your own skin and I've taken a photo like that and if you go to my Flickr collection you can go ahead and download that and use it yourself I haven't actually taken the work to you know use that photo uh, supposedly if you use the photo and it's high resolution you can make it display in high resolution on HD H uh, high definition or high DPI displays like a Retina MacBook Pro and so on. So um, I've not fully tested that. But anyway, this is just the uh, Virtual Prime uh, app. In summary, get the Prime. If you're a student, get the Prime. If you're not a student, it's still a worthy calculator as you've just seen. It beats TI calculators, even the best Inspire. It's faster, it's the only calculator handheld that has touch. You can pinch to zoom your graphs. It's for a reasonable price at Walmart. I just checked, it's about $115 right now at the end of August 2018. You can expand it with apps. HP is still very much behind it. Um, from what I understand, they are coming out with a revised model. Same, still called the Prime. Just has different chips inside. Might be a little bit faster, we don't know at this point. It'd look exactly the same. So whether you buy this version, which I purchased just a month ago, or the upcoming version in the coming months, you won't regret it. Now, some of you might say, well, what about the other calculators like the 50G? Um, if you have a 50G, do you need the Prime? Maybe not. But uh, this is slower in terms of graphing than this one. And I've already outlined the differences, really. So I would say that this is a very worthy calculator. I like it, but I grew up with legacy HP calculators. I love RPN. Some students, they don't even know what RPN is, right? So if you love algebraic, then the Prime is definitely for you. But you can also switch it to RPN. So just because you have an older HP calculator doesn't mean you should automatically rule out the Prime. Okay. So this has been uh, quite a long video, I understand that, and some millennials will probably say, oh, it was way too long. But um, I'm not a millennial, okay? I'm a guy who likes detail, so I hope I've given you that. Now, some people older than me who's going to come across this video are going to say, well, you should have showed us more. You should have showed us this and this and this. Well, I can't please everybody, but I hope that this video has provided a good balance for everyone to make an informed purchasing decision. And again, 
I would highly recommend the Prime. Thanks for watching.